Yo, yo, welcome back to another episode of the Man of Man Pod. I am one half of the Man of Man Pod, Darius Butler. Got my guy, Antoine Bethe. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We got a very special guest in the building tonight. We've been talking, especially these last few episodes, you know, dabbling and talking more into the uh, financial literacy and, you know, just finance in general for young players and young individuals, um, period, you know, to come into money. And uh, we got a very, very special guest today, my guy, Michael Bappis from Vios Advisors with the Rockefeller Group. How are you, man? I'm doing well. How you doing? What's up, fellas? Doing, yeah, doing outstanding, man. Doing outstanding. So uh, how, how's everything up, up, up your way? You guys getting back to some sense of uh, normalcy? Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. I just want to say that, start with that. But yeah, it's it's. I would say the last month, you're starting to see much more of a, of a change. We, we were pretty... Uh, pretty tightened up until the last month but uh you know the i think the city's back it's it's really starting to come back you're starting to see people in the streets and the trains restaurants the key for the city as everyone knows but w which was really hampering was uh the restaurants and the bars were, were not open and there was a curfew so yeah you know, that that whole that whole uh the city that never sleeps that city was sleeping for a while so. <laughs> yeah a lot, a lot of cities were i mean i'm down yeah. here in florida so you know we we pretty we're a different country down here pretty much yeah, but so. uh we, we've been normal for a while it's seeming normal at least but uh glad to hear that yeah. uh, on that part of it and uh usually on this on this pod man we jump into uh regardless of the guests we want to know your backstory um and kind of how you got to the point that you are now so I'll start from the beginning, um, I know, but for the listeners. And I want to go back on a little bit on, on our relationship. So I met Mike. Um, I got in a, a MBA program uh, with Fordham University, went back to get my master's degree there. And um, it was kind of like a site visit with the group that I was in, um, a group of former players who were in NBA, went and uh, visited uh, the office. Where, where uh, Where's the office located? Uh, Rockefeller Center, 45 Rock. Yeah. So Rockefeller Center, I'm not a big – New York City guy, so we walk over to this office, and I'm I'm seeing the the boardroom, the meeting rooms, and you know they're giving us a rundown of how everything goes, and I'm like, wow, like this is, you know, I kind of want to see what it's like on this side of things. Um, so we kind of kept in contact. Um, I was doing some TV stuff, so I would come to New York, you know, every couple months do some TV stuff, and then you know we'll reach out to Mike and uh, Chris, like, hey man, let's catch up, let's do lunch, let's do something. And we just kept in contact, built that relationship. And I was like, hey, man, Mike, I would love if I could just come in there for like a week and just kind of get behind the curtains and see how you guys operate. And um, getting in there and seeing it for a week, I realized like it was very similar to how we operated on the football side. You know what I mean? That that big multi-billion dollar type industry, but seeing the inner work is team meetings every morning. Everybody's on point. Everybody's on time. Everybody's talking about what they talk about. And then, um, you know, me and Mike continue to work together. So uh, I appreciate you once again for joining us. Just want to give everybody a little backstory. But, uh, you know, now to you, man, Mike, tell us, tell us about how you, how you came up, where you from. All right. That's good. It's kind of a good segue, actually, because uh, I grew up in Salt Lake City. Uh, you know, uh, the Greeks immigrated from, uh, I'm Greek by background, immigrated from Greece, worked on the railroad and ended up settling in Salt Lake because there's a whole mining, coal mine, copper mining uh one of the largest copper pits in the world is in Salt Lake, and it kind of created that immigrant um, setting for, for them, let's say, early 1900s through 1950s. Mm -hmm. So uh, grew up out there. I was always playing sports. I played basketball, baseball, golf growing up uh, and in high school. And, uh, you know, I was just I, I was a decent athlete, but uh, wasn't didn't quite have it. But we'll get to that later on. <laughs> I, uh, I, I went and I played Division One golf, University of Utah. And then uh, my third year of college, I ended up going to Greece. I went to school in Greece, American College of Greece over there, and I played I played hoops uh, for the squads over there. We had, you know, in, in in the world that we were in, there was a lot of travel basketball. You know, as you as mm -hmm. you remember the AAU we used to call it, I guess. And yeah. so we would travel around the country doing a lot of that through high school. And it, it, hoops is my passion as much as I enjoy golf. Uh, hoops is my passion, and so I was lucky enough to be at Utah when. A lot of those, you know, good players when they had a good run, Andre Miller, Keith Van Horn, Mike Doliak, oh, uh, all those yeah. guys were there. And, you know, they, they went to the finals. So I became friends with them, played on the summer league teams with them, and uh, just just sort of stayed in touch. And so I went after after college, I, I went to Phoenix. I was uh, running Jim Flick's golf schools. He's one of the, you know, 
top golf teachers out there at the time. And, and I was in Phoenix running his golf schools. And I just said, look, I think, I think it's time for me to, you know, go move on to this next phase of my career. And I got an internship at Morgan Stanley in New York. Um, just came out here and, and I worked on every desk. I, I, I was, you know, started from, from the, just learning everything I did, you know, kind of mm -hmm. like we were describing earlier, but there's a lot of similarities to, to wall street and, and, and this business as there are, you know, athletics and, and what I, how I grew up, you know, the locker room, keep things in the locker room. You gotta be in time. You gotta hold your weight. You know, if, if, if you, if you, if you, uh, screw something up though, it drags the whole team down. I mean, obviously yeah. you played it to the highest level, but it's very similar. And a lot of, I, we find that a lot of athletes, who finish whatever career in athletics they have are successful on this side of the business. And, and it mm -hmm. should, I think they go, they go hand in hand, not that you need that to be successful, but it, it really helps with the discipline, the on time arrivals, you know, and, the, and, you know, the player interaction and, and the team interaction that we have with our, with our team here is very similar to, to what you, you and, and the rest of the athletes out there are, you know, putting at the crucial, the front of, this is the most important part of our business. Yeah. So that's a quick background. Uh, I could, you know, I, there's, a, there's a lot more there, but I think, you know, I'll let you drive the conversation and see what's important to the, to the listeners and everyone out there. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. sure. I, I, no, I, I just, I just want to ask, you know, <clears throat> working on Wall Street and, you know, I'm um, obviously segue into kind of where you're at now, like, what were some of the bumps and bruises that you had to go through? Because obviously, like you said, like um, kind of similar as far as sports world to where you're at now. And I know sports world, you go through a lot of bumps and bruises. And a lot of people don't see what happens on the background. All they see is what happened on Sundays or on game days. So for yeah. you and your profession, like, what are some of the some ups and downs, bumps and bruises you had to go through? Look, in, in, I think it, there's a couple that come to mind right away. But in sales, you know, you get told no a lot. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, at the end of the day. You, you think you're going to close a client and they say, well, I'm just going to stay where I'm at. Or you think you're going to get a new client to come on uh, and they say, well, you know, I, I'd like to come with you, but I'm not going to come with you. So I think there's a, you, you get told no a lot. Uh, similar, I'll draw the analogy again, but how many times do people tell you you couldn't make the NFL? I mean, you probably heard, right, right. you know, 95% of the time you said you were going, they said you can't. And, yeah. and you know, you came out of Connecticut not a not a big time football school. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you know, you you did something successful to get through there. So I think just staying positive and, and having the confidence in yourself that you can make it, even though everyone says you can't. Uh, the other thing that comes to mind is is you always have there's always a boss that you don't get along with or you don't like. And there's always someone in management that is is uh, breaking your balls for for lack of a better terminology? I, can I say that? I'll say that. Yeah, right. oh yeah, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you can, say, you can yeah. say anything on your podcast. Yeah. It's not uh, <laughs> CNBC. <laughs> All right. right. Yeah. So anyway, they, they're breaking your balls for no reason. They're 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 you know putting you in a position that maybe it's a jealousy. Maybe they're uh, somebody that doesn't want you to succeed because they see you as a threat. Uh, I would I would say those are the two probably most difficult parts of, of, of what we can control in the business. The third part is the element of the, of the, of the markets that, you know, you can do as, as much as you can to try to position someone, but there's always those difficult times like last March, last March and April. I mean, that was probably, mm -hmm. if I look back on the most difficult times of my career, it was that. And then in 2008, the financial crisis, because right. everybody's panicking and, 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 People, some people, a lot of people care more about their money than they do anything else in their lives. So, <laughs> you know, that's that you're, you're managing that and you're trying to be in touch. But again, like anything, it's becoming important to become a counselor at that time. <laughs> at that point, you, are, you are, absolutely are a counselor. And so, you know, I'd say those are the three most difficult parts of our business uh, and, and the bumps in the road. Just like anything, you just got to get through them, stay focused, continue focusing on the plan, you know. Mm -hmm. It's easier now, said, what, but yeah, for, for sure, for sure. But uh, I'm glad you drew those. Um, well, we both kind of drew those parallels to you know, kind of how athletics help prepare you to that for that. Because uh, I consult younger guys now, and uh, especially on the transition for players, you know, you put that work in, you put that discipline in, 
for so long kind of in that industry in that one lane and then when you get outside of football it's kind of you know it's brand new it's uncomfortable you're used to being good or great at something and now you're in this new world and we don't really realize like all those reps all those days you kind of kind of almost built a former superpowers like nor like everybody don't, doesn't move like that with that type of stress and you going we're going to the meet room after you perform at practice for a couple hours and you sit there for another hour and a half and they're basically telling you everything you did wrong in front of your peers like everybody's not wired that way um so being it that was able to help you transition into your new um you know your new lane i think it's important for a lot of people to hear that and you kind of touched on it but um from the flips for, for the athlete that's coming into money. And I know, so as a matter of fact, let me ask you this, because you hear about athletes and, and having financial troubles and, you know, entertainers, young people coming to money. What was it like when you got your first check on Wall Street, like your first <laughs> bonus or your first, what, with your peers? Like, cause I've talked to a lot of you guys and I hear a lot of s similar stories, but obviously the difference in your world is you're, 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 I mean, I would say you're in your 50s now. You're still doing it. You probably got another, you know, decade plus to go if you want to. That's obviously much different in the yeah. sports world. So what's the similarities in those 20s, maybe even early 30s when you first start touching some real money? Well, uh, I was I was making I was making two grand a month, twenty four thousand dollars a year. And uh, I got a, I got a five thousand dollar bonus because I hit my goals. Mm -hmm. And at the same time one of my uh one of my close friends he he got a, a nice little paycheck as well so <laughs> i shouldn't be saying this but i will <laughs> yeah, hey, it's the hey, 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 it's the hey, you good we said let's go to vegas so we said all right so we're gonna meet it was in november sometime it turned out to be a great story but we, we meet in vegas you know and 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 we said but we, let's let's at least celebrate you know in a way that's 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 civil for 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 the first part of it so we end up, we end up uh renting out the um uh, wine cellar at del frisco's in vegas and it was uh it was a thousand dollars to rent it so we each put in 500 bucks yeah. we said we're gonna drink wine we're gonna eat steaks and we're just gonna hang out bs and enjoy our time here yeah so uh within like we were laughing hanging out just really enjoying it and 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 the maitre d comes over and he says, uh, you know, we'd like you to meet somebody. And, you know, we didn't know who it was. We we're like, eh, no, nah, yeah, we're good, man. We're just having a good time. We're hanging out. And he's like, no, no, no. You really want to meet this guy. So in walks Tommy Lasorda. Mm -hmm. uh, because at the time he was a part owner of, I guess, Del Frisco's. And he says, he brings a bottle of wine. He says, I want to sit down with you guys for a little bit. You know, we're thinking, gosh, you know, the manager, the Dodgers, one of the legendary managers of, of, of right. baseball. And um, he said, you know, the reason I'm here is I, I want to talk to you guys. You guys are laughing. You're having such a good time. And that's what life, life's all about. He says, no matter what life brings you, no matter what life does to you, you got to keep laughing. Right. So he, we, had, we break bread with him, hang out. And he, and he says, great to meet you both. I want you to remember one thing is keep laughing boys. So he, he gets our card and he sends us autographed pictures of himself, you know, saying to Michael, great time in Vegas. You guys are the best time of the sorta. Mm -hmm. So why, why, I mean, why that story is relevant in many ways is, is, you know, you got to enjoy yourself, but it's, it's, it's be prudent at the same time. I learned like five life lessons in that half hour that we were with him. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, don't take yourself too seriously. Enjoy life, but also follow up. You know, do what mm -hmm. you say you're going to do. The guy said he's going to send us a picture. I mean, it's easy for him to go back and manage. He, he might have forgot whatever. He's got That's the baseball sure. meetings coming up. You know, at, at that level, he sends, you know, a couple of young chumps who were trying to make it in, in, the, in the Wall Street world. He, he, you know, did what he said, sent us video uh, pictures and, and, uh, and, you know, I, I, that was really a meaningful time in my life to remember on what business is about and what follow up is about. And and mm -hmm. we say that's where I got. We say you got to be out and about. You know, you got to be in front of people. If you're yeah. holed up in our business, it, it, you know, on our side of the business, it, you, you're not you're not doing the right thing. You got to be in front of people. You got to be interacting, talking. And, and I learned a lot from that little lesson. But, mm -hmm. you know, if we if we take that to 
I guess what's your next point? I, you know, you want to talk about, you know, when players come into money or, or should yeah. we? Should yeah, we, yeah, for sure. Sir. Right yeah. So, so look, there's, there's a fine line between doing something like that and then just spending everything. Uh, and I think, I don't care what age, I mean, what background you come from, what education you do or don't have, what family structure you do or don't have. If you're 18, 19 years old, getting a you know multi million dollars of, of of money, it is so important to have the right guidance once you get that because it, you could be the smartest kid in the world with the, with the greatest background, or the dumbest kid in the world with a, a, a tough background. It's pretty much your age and your maturity in life. Mm -hmm. It's too early to have that much money without yeah. someone advising you. And and yeah. so, you know, what, what we talked about, Darius, when you were here for that program is is the financial literacy side of it. It's just, you know, I, I've become, it's become a passion of mine in life. Mm -hmm. it, it coincides with my business, but I just want to help younger kids who become successful understand, just just understand what they have. You know, it's a P&L. Yeah. What is a budget? What is a taxes? What, you know, how much can you spend a month? And, and a lot of times, unless you're the super elite athlete, your first contract's not that much money when you really, right. Yeah. Right. you know, you make, um, you know, whatever it is, it, it, it's, it's, you're only making about 45% of whatever it comes your way. And, it, and it's new. So that, and that, that'll kind of get me to, a, 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 I guess, a different part of the question. So, um, like you said, coming into that money, and for a lot of us, you know, we're not coming from that background, not coming from that level yeah. of financial literacy. Yeah. And even if you are, it's still tough to handle that that type of money. So, and it's tough because you're put in a tough spot where you have to trust people. So I got to sit down with Michael, you know, in my pre-draft process, most likely. Yeah. Yeah. And now in this few months worth of time, I have to build that trust to make some of the most important decisions in my life. You're so, so right. As a but player, I don't mean to interrupt you, dude, on, but, but but not even with that, though. So if I'm sitting down and I'm not coming from that background as far as like financial literacy and I'm trying to interview a Michael, I don't even know the type of questions that I should be even asking. You understand? And my family don't either. Yep. So yep. so I, I just kind of wanted to put that in there. But you go ahead. Finish, yeah, but. yeah I, that's exactly what I was that's about to say. So oh, from no, your, no. you know, from your standpoint, What's those? What's the top three questions you was you would say for like an athlete sitting not even in front of you, but in front of any advisor that's potentially wants to work for him? Okay, coming into I got three questions I need to ask this guy, like or or lady. What should those questions be for somebody that's just coming into this money but no uh, no background with handling money? Look, I think there's 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 so many questions that obviously are are, are supposed to be asked, but. I would start by, you know, and this happened in one of the sessions we had here at our office with, with, uh, you know, all, all you, you and all the players that were here. Mm -hmm. Someone in the room mentioned, I want to know how much money and how much success that financial advisor has had because they, they have to have been successful in their career to get to a point where they are. I don't want them to make their first million off of me and my first million. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, I think looking at like time in the business, making sure they have a clean record uh, and, and how, how do you do that? I, like, how do you do outside? Because for us, a lot of yeah. it is, you know, word of mouth or somebody mm -hmm. say, hey, you know, this agent told me about this advisor. Yeah. This player told me about this advisor. But how does that player take that next step and say, all right, let me let me how do I check this dude out? Look, I think it's a lot easier today because we have the internet and you can Google yeah. it uh, yeah. and you can look on, uh, at their websites and all that. Websites important. Length of the business is important. Uh, it's what's called a U4 in our mm -hmm. business. You can see how clean their 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 record is. Uh, and, and you know, if, if, if they're a managing director, if they're a top person at their firm and you're 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 using also the due diligence of the firm. Mm -hmm. I know that this employee must be a good employee if he's a or she is a top person at that firm. Gotcha. So I think that's the that's the that's the first question I would ask. Mm -hmm. uh, the second question I would ask is is you know what budget? What does a budget look like? And if you know where I've been successful is I can relate to people. 
of, you know, I, I, I grew up in a humble environment, uh, a tough father and a, and a supportive mother, you know, and I understand what every person, you know, what every person what empathy does for everybody, you know, mm -hmm. that person has empathy for you. And frankly, uh, they can't be a jock sniffer. And, and I yeah. think you can, you can tell that pretty quickly in a conversation with someone, if they're real or if they're just, they're just starstruck. Yeah. yeah. So I think, you know, you use your own intuition. And then the third one is, is more like numbers. If you, you know, look at what a budget looks like. So I just made this much money. Let's just call it a million bucks. Mm -hmm. Ask, ask the advisor, what does that million dollars look like over the next 12 months? Mm -hmm. So million dollars at the end of the 12 months, you're going to only have 500, let's call it. Okay. Then yeah. you're going to have another 5% probably go to the pension or to some retirement vehicle. So mm -hmm. now you're left with 450. Okay, now that I have 450 in cash, what can I afford to buy? Now this sounds complicated, but if the advisor is good at what they do, they will have this all laid out for you, and 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 he or she will walk you through what it looks like. Now, there is a bit of a leap of faith, so it's 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 a character, you know, check the character, but also ask ask do your due diligence and ask you know anybody in the business that knows. I mean, there's a lot of yeah. There's a lot of guys. I remember when 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 um, some of my friends ended up going to play for the Orlando Magic. Uh, they they uh, were Horace Grant was mm -hmm. like a little bit more of a. It, it was Mike Doliak and Matt Harper, two of my good friends, yeah. and uh, they went into the Magic. And Horace Grant kind of took them under his wing. Mm -hmm. So I, you know you got to look for an older elder mm -hmm. statesman. On the yeah, we are, we always yeah, we speak always on talk that. about that. Yeah, yeah, and I and I, I I'll never forget Horace Grant what he did for those guys. I mean, he took them. He said, "Look, go get some suits because at the time you had to wear suits, whatever." He's like, mm -hmm. "We're gonna go to my guy. I'm gonna tell you what you can buy, what you can't." He he took them to restaurants. He said, "Don't let these hangers on." You know, he he really gave them guidance that that was important at that time when they were rookies. So I would say, look for an an older leader on yeah. your team yeah pick their brain and and i'm gonna leave it with one thing you gotta ask questions no matter how stupid you feel no matter how dumb you think the question is it's your money it's your yeah. career ask the question and, if and, that, you, and that, that's a hard part me. too you know yeah. we talk we talk about that too just being because you know when you're dealing with us yeah um you know it's a level of so much you know, pride, so much ego. Pride, ego yeah. that you don't want to even feel like ignorant to something like that. You got the money, you got two, three shit for some people, 15 million dollars out of the gate. Yeah. So with all that money in the platform that you're already on, you don't want to seem like even in front of you know an a potential advisor or something, it's yeah. almost like, oh shit, if he's telling me, you know, he's gonna charge me a point for my money or a point to have whatever. I may not even have a clue what that means. What that mean, right? But in the midst of the conversation, I'll be all right, cool. Yeah, yeah. okay, cool, cool. And yeah. then people, a lot of people, which it sounds crazy because it's money, but when you're that young, you're making so much of it. Yeah, it's almost easier for people to trust somebody who walks in in a suit and says, Hey, yeah. this is what I do, this is where I work. All right, cool. I know what he's doing, you know, he works with. These other three players too is good, so that's important. You know, ask questions. Yeah. Uh, all along the whole ride, if you work yeah, with yeah. an advisor for five years, it should be five years worth of questions. And then yeah, obviously, yeah. you should be. Um, I think this is important too. So I always tell my guys, even if you have someone that's working for you, um, make sure you're learning. So like, make sure right. you're learning. Yep. Like, if you should be working with an advisor two, three years, and your third year in the league. Yeah you still have the same question you had as a rookie. Yeah. You know what I mean? So how does that, th that dynamic work? Look, I think, I think what we try to do is just continue the education process. I mean, I'm mm -hmm. learning every day, you're learning every day, but, but the, the, the financial literacy component of it is, is crucial. And, 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 you know, if, if, if there's a way that, you know, whether it's, 10 minutes a day you, you look for one term in finance in finance that you want to try to understand or what we try to do too is is 
outline like a whole outline of what this looks like you know we, we talk about the arc of a career so you start here your initial contract this is yeah can you touch on that real quick yeah is that arc of your career because players young players may be listening to this and you know coming into it once again our mindset is i'm going to come to the league i'm going to play for ab play for 14 i'm playing for 14 years i'm gonna have a hall of fame career win a couple of super bowls make a bunch of money right off into the sunset yeah for 80 plus probably 90 percent of us that's not the reality so yeah. what does that career arc look like? Um, and obviously you work with a bunch of clients that are not athletes. Yeah. So I guess if you can kind of compare the, the big differences and there's some similarities that should be there as well. So look, we, we, I mean, I don't know if you can see this. If you can't, we'll take it out. But this is, this is yeah. kind of what it looks like. You start with your initial contract. And then when you're in the, in the beginning phase of this, you, all you're trying to do is, is, you know, put a conservative, picture together for yourself get some insurance so because obviously all you have is your body mm -hmm. at, at your level but it's also similar for a, a person that's starting out with a business or a person that's starting out with success you want to take care of what is yours and what you have been able to succeed with succeed with and then we talk about okay if you get your first contract you can spend this much money and you can put this much away and we're going to be very conservative with this uh, stay away from any investment that someone asks you that you think they need your money for. Right. You know, try to do only investments that they're helping you to make you money rather that than, makes sense. you know, yeah. like the restaurant is the easiest, can, the easiest thing. I mean, 90% of restaurants fail. So mm -hmm. if someone's asking you to put up money and you have your big name, you know, you're, 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 you're a big name guy in, in the town you're in and, you shouldn't have to put anything up. If you want to be on the face of that restaurant, fine. That's right. your own thing. But you shouldn't give anyone money for a restaurant. You shouldn't give anyone money for an investment like that. It should be only to help yourself. So anyway, the arc of the career. Gotcha. That makes sense. And the thing is, you got to start planning for, for retirement because you don't know how long that's going to last. Yeah, that's like, that's like in any business. And then one of the hardest parts for, for I, that I've seen for athletes, having done this for a while, is towards the end. So you're now, you're now, whether you're 15 years or five years, you see something that you worked for since you were two years old. You drove, you had an edge, you were the, you were the best player in eighth grade, you were the best player in 10th grade or one of them, and then you made it to the top. Now, that limelight goes away and that drive goes away. You just, you're, you're still, you got your whole life ahead of you mm -hmm. and you're not going to do what you've practiced for your whole life. So we try to get people prepared for what's the next phase of life? What's your passion? What's your, how do you want to be philanthropic? If you want to be philanthropic, what does that look like? What is, what is something that you think you can do? So, if, I mean, take yourself as an example. You were doing none of this TV stuff mm -hmm. three years ago or whatever it was yep. years ago. You kind of took a niche. You liked it and you're good at it. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would try to tell them at the end of the career is pick something you like and you're good at and just go for it. So I think, you know, within it is creating the plan to put in place that you keep that money and you can you can continue to live life based on what you just did for the past 15 years. For people yeah. that are earlier in the league and, and, and don't make it, you know, three, four or five years, they make it in the league. Uh, you know, ask yourself, what are you good at and what do you think you can do? from what you have just done because people want to hear about athletics regardless of, of, I, I think athletes don't realize how much, how much uh, desire there is to hear how they made it and to hear what happens and to hear the, the bumps in the road. Like you're asking that me, story. Questions. I, my, I would want to know your whole story. I mean, right. I, obviously it's not for today and obviously I know it because we've talked about it, but what's interesting to me is, you know, what happens when you got hurt? Or what happens when you 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 said you know what I'm not good enough, you know screw this I'm done, you know there was probably a time when you're like I I, I can't make it, mm -hmm. and then you said bullshit I can make it I can do this I'm just as good as that other guy, you know so those are the things that I'd like to learn about on your end and you could, that's how I relate to the players as I tell them this is what I this is how I did it during those hard times. I got a question for you, Michael. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about a player that's that's gets into his second contract, his, his third contract. Right. 
And uh, I'm trying to, I'm gonna go into like the family office setup, right? So, you know, you have your, your billion, billionaire families that have this uh, structure, right? Family office is a structure where everything is laid out. You know, you have people um, on your team that's gonna, you know, make sure the, the I's are dotted, T's are crossed. Um, would you suggest something like that? And, and you know, not saying that you got to have a billion dollars, but having that structure like a family office, would you suggest that with guys that's coming into those second contracts that has, you know, contracts worth $60 million and, and things of that nature, would you suggest that? Emphatically, yes. I mean, I think it, you, you surround yourself with the right advisors, you know, mm -hmm. your attorney, your, uh, your, uh, uh, you know, CPA, your tax advisor. Wait, right. before before you, that's a term right there in the family office that a lot of people with money have no idea what that means. A lot of listeners, I'm sure, don't know what a family office is. So can you give us real quick on what a family, single family or multi-family office is? Yeah, so basically, I think it starts with your brand. You, you, you have a brand that if you're that successful, people know who you are. So you could, you, you, you're, you know, and, and this is starting to happen more and more now, but you got to take your brand and what you just did and use it for your next phase of your career because yeah, that's sure. who you are. And so whether it's public speaking, whether it's podcasts and TV shows like you're doing, whether it's real estate investing, what, you know, whatever your brand is, use what you have and wrap that into something that you can, you can make money with in the future. Now, yeah. from a family office standpoint, it's a family office is when you are, the person with all the money, I think it's probably north of a hundred million, but you could do it with, with 40 to 50 million where you have advisors around you and you're, you're paying them for their services to help you manage that family money. You start with philanthropy, you start with, uh, having saved all that money. How, what kind of interest are you getting? Are you, are you, you know, we talk about risk tolerance. What's your risk tolerance? Start there, put a plan in place and just stick with the plan. What's what am I making now? Multifamily office means when you have multiple wealthy families that, that share resources to to manage the, their money. So let's mm -hmm. say three or four players got together, use the same person or it doesn't need to be players, whatever. Three or four families got together. They're using the same advisors and they're kind of bouncing ideas off of each other and sharing. Mm -hmm. ideas. That's multifamily yeah. office for the family office. Yeah, so I asked that I asked that question, you know, it was something that I've looked into, but then even with the multi family office, right? Um, something that me and D Bob we talk about, like we don't talk, we don't have these conversations in the locker room enough, right? Yeah. Whereas um where you have this is one time in your life where you're gonna walk in a space where you have <laughs> twenty to thirty guys making ample money, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, we all trying we all basically have the same vision in mind. We wanna we're coming from humble beginnings and we want to make sure um, we create a legacy, right? We create wealth for our family. Why wouldn't this be a space where, hey, I get with three or four guys, um, you know, we get, you know, we get an attorney, we get X, Y, Z. Now we can pay this person and, you know, it, it, it kind of knocks the, I don't have to pay this person X amount of money annually where we can kind of knock that into fours and mm -hmm. we could all grow together um again this is something that you know me and d -Bot talk about i don't i don't understand why we we don't have these conversations more often yo it's genius and no one's doing it yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, I mean, <laughs> that is that i think that will be the evolution of of something that you you can like run with yeah mm -hmm. it's you're not no one's doing it and you, yeah. you know if you got if you got four or five guys with x amount of money and, and you're pulling resources and maybe you're you have a you have a guy a B that's good in this and yeah. Derek, you have a guy that's good in this and then someone like me comes in and says okay let's put this together you're just sharing resources and you're sharing you know you're asking more questions and you're getting more answers and, and I, I think that's something that you know is 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 not being done let's call it it's it's in the first quarter the first yeah. quarter, the first quarter but it's 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 a phenomenal idea. And then it, it creates another level of checks and balances exactly. as well. Cause sure. I know it, yeah. Yeah, well. it, another, another red flag that I'll tell guys is, and like you kind of, I, I don't know if you meant it this way when you said jock sniffers, 
But um, I had an older guy tell me, like, if you got a financial advisor and, and they only represent athletes, that's a red flag. Like, go the other way. Because obviously, we, like we talked about it earlier, the situation that you come in, you have a lot of guys misinformed, uninformed, got guys and girls misinformed, and they get taken advantage of mm -hmm. by sharks, you know, by suits, by whatever you want to call them, who come in with, you know, ill intent. Like, hey, I'm going to get, you know, I'm going to get my points. I'm going to do this. And I'm kind of going to move on and get more clients and kind of keep feeding that machine. So um, you create those different checks and balances. And then when you got guys or ladies who work with variety of different clients, like it, 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 it's, it's, I feel like it's better. You get, you get a different level of deal flow. Um, it's a different level of experience because if you're just working with the same guys, like you only see the same things over and over yeah. again. So, um, and, you, and you don't have the check and balance you just referred to. Yeah, you don't have the checks and balances. So I know you're just getting into. Um, you just did the NFL PA thing, and I know it's uh, it's it's gotten. They've made it more strict because I know it was it was kind of a little easy back in the day. So um, now that you kind of got into that into that space, I guess what what's your plan going forward? Because if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, I know you worked with athletes in the past, mm -hmm. but majority of your clients aren't like aren't young athletes, right? You're right. Look, mm -hmm. I mean, my plan would be going forward. I, I, again, I start with like I have a passion for. I can't stand reading the headlines, seeing someone lose money again. I mean, it just it 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 makes me crazy from a personal standpoint because I know I can help that person. You know, I know if I had gotten in front of that person, I would have helped them keep that money. And mm -hmm. and so, I guess my my plan to do from now is just try to work with people and just educate the financial literacy. Again, I keep saying it, but it's such a crucial component to this. Just educate people, you know, work with the NFLPA to get in and just talk to the, talk to the players. And, and uh, part of what's, what's difficult right now, I'll just be very frank with you is, is a lot of the younger players, uh, they, they don't seek the advice that some of the older yeah. players do. They don't seek the, yeah. the leadership that and I think it comes with the generation. I, I don't even think it's just players. I think it's across across the board. You know, I see it with employees and that they're not seeking the leadership and learning as much as we did when, yeah. when, we were, when we were coming up. And it might be a generational thing, but it's just look, my focus is try to get in front of as many people and athletes and business owners that I can that I can help because yeah. I know I can help them. I know I have a good structure. I know I have a good offering and I have the right service model and the team to be able to support anything they need so they can focus on their career. Yeah. Gotcha. You know, I mean, that, that's, that's the thing you want to be able to focus on, on the field or on your, you know, if you're, if you're, you know, uh, whatever, whatever profession you have, a small business, real estate, whatever it is, you want to focus it all there. So you don't have to worry about all this. Yeah. yeah. But you, I, and a big part of that is like you kind of talked about earlier is why you're focusing on what priority one or a is you also have an advisor, some or a team that is, helping you along the way educating yeah. you along the way bringing you along the way and someone you can ask you know to get that that knowledge that game because yeah. i tell players all the time football is important but you got a lot of life and a lot money and other things to manage after football after is football. gone so yeah, yeah so while that's important that you know that focus is whatever that main thing keep the main thing the main thing you also take care of those, those other things like you just kind of spoke on the generation that kind of bring me to the next part of the conversation uh, how long? How long have you been in um, in this in this space? Uh, I started in 1998, so 23 years. Okay, so 23 years in this space. Obviously, a long time. Like you said earlier, you know, you've dealt with 2008 crash, and now what we just had in 2020, which was followed by historical bull market. Um, you know, obviously, a lot of things have happened in the Fed with a lot of uh, money being pumped in it. Um, you have, you know, tech space taking off, kind of that that growth space. Um, you got cryptos. You got a lot of things going on where back in the day, obviously, you had to have people to even get in the game. You had to have brokers. You had to have advisors. And now it's a lot easier to get in the game, a lot more information out there. So people may not feel like they need to seek that um, yeah. advice. Just kind of, I guess, talk about it where we kind of are now and where you see it going. Uh, you know, however detailed you want to get into it, because obviously I feel like a lot of geniuses, a lot of investing or trading geniuses were kind of created in this last probably year or so because of how the market has been 
Um, but uh, and it, I feel I feel like it's dangerous. I like the fact that a lot of people are getting into it, uh, being more informed, taking a little more control of it. But at the same time, I think it's uh, important that we get educated on it. So uh, I guess the question is, what do you? How do you see it going forward? You know, from from what we're coming off of twenty twenty year, and then I guess going forward twenty twenty one and beyond. Yeah, uh, look, you make great points across. Uh, the, the, the education again is crucial, but I think right now we are we just went through something that no one in our lifetime has seen. Uh, mm-hmm. We went through a pandemic, whether. Uh, you know, remove all the political political uh, noise. It it was a it was something that shut down our world for a year. Uh, yeah. And and so, coming out of that, it's important to recognize. Okay, where are the opportunities? And I think the economy is going to grow rapidly this year. Uh, it already is growing rapidly this year. You're starting to see um, cities come back at a different pace, but the cities are coming back. There's a very big pent up demand for uh, the human interaction. I mean, we're human beings. And and while people are okay staying home three, six months, the humans crave interaction Mm -hmm. with each other, speaking to each other. And so I think that's going to drive a lot of the economics uh, positivity that's going to happen over the next six to 18 months. Uh, And what the the key, though, to, to what you were describing is people getting in the markets, keep people doing, whether it's crypto and all that. What what what's more important is to take a step back and we try to structure portfolios in a way that you're not totally exposed in any market because everything mm-hmm. reverts to the mean and everything is cyclical. When something is hot, the other thing's not. When something's not hot, the other thing is hot. And so we try to structure portfolios where you know between forty and fifty percent of a portfolio has minimal exposure to the overall markets, whether it's in bonds whether it's in alternatives, where, whether you don't see them fluctuate a lot. We try to put it in a place where, so like in last March, your equity exposure, if it's you know, 40 to 60%, it would have fluctuated, but not as much as the overall markets. And I think that's where the expert uh, knowledge of, of the people you know here at Rockefeller and the people that we use outside of Rockefeller to, to manage the money, that's where, that's where you really uh, see our value in difficult times. In, in good times, you don't really uh, you don't really see our value as much as you do in difficult times. So I think I think you're going to see a positive market for the you know near term. Uh, it is going to be without you're going to have a correction or something. You're going to have you know the the something like today that the market's getting slammed, but it's it's <laughs> yeah. people are trying to figure out this jobs market, and I think part of the problem is the extension of the unemployment is giving people an excuse not to go back to work Mm -hmm. Uh, and and you're also seeing people that uh there there's an element of of okay now am i really going to go back to doing the same thing i was doing i think there's some indecision in people's lives what do i want to do now that i just went through this hell for for the last year you know and what is my people have been home and say you know what my you know (laughs) No. My values have changed. Like you know, that yeah. job, I, don't, I don't. It's a, it's different ways to do what I've been doing. Some people obviously, you know, travel a lot yeah. to for meetings or clients, yeah. and now they've been doing it on Teams or Zoom or yeah. whatever for the last year plus. It's like I could stay home and do more home. And then as far yeah. as the other part of it, with people not, because I know around here, and I've seen it. I've, I saw something on Twitter yesterday. A lot of like restaurant uh workers or or yeah. kind of that work like it's like you know like you said they're getting more money on unemployment and yeah. it's a lot of these places that are looking for people to work and it's because of, and i can definitely understand that shit. if i'm going here and not getting you know get yeah. 10 nine bucks an hour or i could do this so i definitely understand it from that standpoint so it's some things that you know i feel like got to be fixed on that front but um yeah it, it, it's gonna be interesting i'm a little I, i'm just I'm a little afraid for a lot of people who are jumping, especially we're, we're in the news, uh, the right. news world, a hype cycle where it's like yeah. shit, everybody yeah. talking about this, yeah. exactly. man, let me go in here and get that. And for people that can afford to lose it or, yep. you know, absorb it, maybe hold it for 10 years. And other people are like, you know what? I'm going to bet my rent money on it. I'm a little afraid on that. I am too. Um, you, so, can't, you can't chase the hype. You can't, yeah, you can't chase, chase the hype. Because at, at, at the end of the day, that hype goes away. Yeah. 
you know, and think about it. Like, like I'm going to make another sports analogy, but how many times you see teams that are up by in football, you know, three or four touchdowns lose. Yeah. You don't think that team's going to lose when you're going at a halftime, they're down 28, nothing. Nobody, you know, so it's, it's a similar cycle. And you know, the NBA, you'll see teams down 25, come back and win by five. Yeah. You know? And so I think the analogy I'm drawing is you can't get caught up in the hype. You got to stay in the moment. And, and you guys know that better than anybody. It's third down and four in a playoff game. If you start to take yourself back and say, there's 80,000 people watching me, I can't screw up. You're, you're, you're over. Yeah. You know, I think right now it's stay true to the, stay true to what you're doing and stay true to that situation. You've, if you've put the time in, you've put the practice in on that third and four, you know exactly what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You're confident in yourself. So we're in the same position. We've put the time in. We know what we're doing. And and the worst thing to do is get caught up in the hype, which I think, to your point, a lot of people are doing right now. Yeah, yeah. I say it. I say it all the time. Stay in your lane. <laughs> Stay in your lane. Like I, I, I get it. It, it. it looks good, but I tell D Butter all the time. I'm like D Butter. Dang, that's not for me. I'm gonna stay in my lane. I'm gonna do what I'm what I'm good at. And don't get me wrong. I'm I'm gonna read on it. I'm gonna do some due diligence. But if I don't feel comfortable, I'm gonna stay in my lane and I'm gonna leave that for for, for the next person. Look, know your role. That's the way I say. That's it. <laughs> You know, yeah, so know where you are, man. You, you, if you're the point guard, dish the ball. If yeah, the, for sure. Keep, 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 keep your head up. I'm, yeah. I'm gonna drop that picture. Drop yeah, that yeah, picture right there, Tom. Keep your head up. See the floor. Don't get caught in the height. No tunnel vision. My coach used to say, "I don't want to see you dribbling nails on the floor." Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So uh, we got shoot five minutes. I know we've been talking obviously a lot as far as athletes and entertainers, the people that you know have have a lot, and you want to keep and grow that. But for the listeners, I'm sure we got a ton of listeners, you know, who are in that position, who, you know, are everyday, you know, hardworking uh, Americans. I guess what would be your advice to them in this time? Because I feel like there are some opportunities, um, some opportunities that are kind of tried and true that, you know, the fundamentals of it. But what are some things that you would give that some people who have absolutely because a lot of people have no knowledge of the markets and how to present what to do. And I know my simplest form, I tell people. Invest in something you believe in, you can research, and then let time do its thing. You know, that that's your best bet. But uh, what, I guess what would be right. your advice to anybody listening to this? But, and, and, and to piggyback on that, I don't think a lot of people, when they come into it, they don't think about the time aspect, right? They look for that, I want to get rich quick. You know, I yeah. want to get this money quick. You know, um, so again, for for the, the, the average worker or the average American, I don't think a lot of people have that time to just sit and wait to be like, okay, I'm going to put this money, I'm going to let this do, and then 20 years from now, I'm going to see what it does. Again, I just think a lot of people are looking for that get-rich scheme, or mm -hmm. how can how can I put this money here, and in six months, <laughs> I'll become a millionaire, and I'm like, look, yeah. that's <laughs> not going to happen. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's yeah, not going to happen, but to what Deepak was saying, like, what would you say to a, um, a everyday worker, hard worker? Um, look, I, I, I mean, look, the, the, my dad always says, there's no such thing as a quick buck, right? You, you know, you, you got to put the time in. You got to do the research. If if it's if it's too good to be true, I'll start there. It probably is. It probably is. Yeah. And 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 anytime something happens quick, and 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 you don't put the work in to make the money, I would say ninety five percent of the time it's not real. But mm -hmm. from a from a practical standpoint, what we always try to tell people is, no matter what your situation is, you can always save something. So we recommend that someone, you know, start with start with. I what, agree with that. Whatever weekly you make, let's say you make a weekly salary or monthly salary, whatever it is, take whether it's twenty five bucks a month or two hundred bucks a month, take that and put it in in a savings account as though you're paying a bill. So you pay your power bill, you pay your light bill, you pay your, you know, your uh, whatever bills you have. Make one more bill, and put it into savings because if you don't save that money, you're going to spend it. And you'll realize over time to your point, AB, that if you let that sit for three, five, seven, ten 10 years, it grows pretty fast just from you saving it mm -hmm. from you putting money away. And then after you get a little bit of a, of a, of a nest egg, um, 
start to do some research on investment funds. You know, I, I never never put all your eggs in one basket. That's that. Those are those are the two themes I would say. You can't put all your eggs. Diversify. In one Diversify. Diversification is is crucial to anything, and you could take the risk and throw it all in. You know, but it's just like going to Vegas. You bet on black or you bet on red. You know, you got a 50 50 shot of winning, but it, it seems like you got like an 80 percent chance of losing. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. not the case, you know. So diversify what you're investing in, diversify it and look for, you know, in today's world, there's mutual funds, there's ETFs. There's certain ways you can diversify yourself after you build that nest egg. But I would just start with a savings. Just start with a savings as though it's a bill and, and don't look back. And it might be hard some months. But you, mm -hmm. you keep saving that fifty bucks or that one hundred bucks, and then if you if you have an, a job where there's there's retirement options available for you, like you know IRAs or or you know four hundred one k plan or yeah. whatever whatever it may be, always invest in those. Even though you feel like you can't, or even though you feel you're not going to touch that money for forty years, you know if you're a twenty five year old uh, man or woman just starting out in, in work. Uh, you, you'd be you'd be surprised to see a lot of the companies we deal with. Only 20, 30, 40 percent of the employees participate in the four hundred one k plan, and and that, that's a problem. Yeah. yeah. And and so when we educate, you know, we we have these big four hundred one k plans for these big companies. We're speaking to, to to everybody in the company, every employee in the company, and so we try to tell them, look, this is the best thing this company can do for you, is give you access to the four hundred one k plan where the, you participate with your money. And a lot of times they'll participate and they'll match your money. And people just don't even think about it. But it's 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 much harder to be disciplined to pay like a bill if you don't create it as though it is a bill. Yeah, for sure. And like you, uh, I, I agree with the point you said that you are, I feel like, you know, most people, the overwhelming majority have something to say. Because I know, we know, you know, we had humble beginnings and it was things that we spent money on that we could have saved or invested, especially young people that's coming into money investing is um shit just important as saving but before we let you go man i know you're a hooper man <laughs> ab always going back and forth you know about our top fives and obviously you got oh, a couple more years oh. on us you're not gonna so i got it we, we've had we've had some back and forth about jordan every time i say lebron is better you call me crazy obviously i'm you calling you more. crazy so <laughs> i just need before i let you go man i need to know the top five players that you've seen top five basketball players since you're a hooper that you've seen, you know, so you don't have to count the guys that, you know, were there can't before count, you. Can't count the older guys. Okay. Well, Michael Jordan broke our hearts. I'm a Utah Jazz fan, as you know. So it's going cool. to be a little bit biased. I'm just warning you right now. It's going to be a little bit biased. But Michael Jordan broke our hearts in 97 and 98. So I'm going to say it's Jordan. Yeah. You're not going to like this. DB. That's, 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 that's all three of our one. We'll go yeah. One. yeah. Are we going it's your top five. It's your top five. It's your, it's your top. My, I'm giving you mine real quick. Mine is Jordan. Oh LeBron, my god! And those two can be either either one. Jordan, Jordan Lebron. Um, who was my third? Uh, Jordan Lebron, Kobe, Steph, Kevin and Durant. Kate. Those are my oh, top five. Right. right so, so I left. So, I left. I left. Shout so my, out. So mine. So mine. was uh, uh, MJ, Lebron, Kobe. Shaq, and um, the other day I had a large one in mind. Now we yeah. 80s baby, so we, we I gotta hear uh, yours now. MJ, right. I'm going MJ, Kobe, Hakeem, oh. Carl Malone, Mel Man, and I got it. I'm gonna go with Magic. Yeah. I, go I, Magic over Steph. I'm gonna go Magic. No, I want to go. Magic. I, I'm. I got a tie for fifth. Magic Bird, because those rivalries Ooh. in the '80s were some of the best basketball. I still think. If you go back, like during, during this day, during the quarantine, I was I was watching the. I would just put on you know NBA classics. They had it running all the time. Uh -huh. watch, and that was that was real basketball. So I'm I'm doing a tie for fifth. Magic and Bird. Darius is really in the moment. He's an in the moment guy. Like you yeah. know, it, this this the game of basketball is so you know it, it has so much history and deep. But he likes to forget history. Bro, you know, he was voice, a history. I, 
I've seen okay. a lot of history. Steph Curry, what he's done, I what think, he's I currently think, doing. I think, I, think, I think he. I he, mean, that's he will be in the top five at some point. Correct, right, correct. right, right now. Yeah, you know what I mean. You know, right now. And then even K, the, for you to put KD in the top five right now. No. Uh, All right, let's let's, let's 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 do one more thing. What's your top five right now playing? Ooh. Right now playing. Uh, LeBron is still one. I will go KD two. I will go Steph I, three. I, I'm putting Steph over KD. KD had to join Steph to win. Remember that. I'm putting Steph uh, over KD two. Okay, okay, okay. Now we're going to say pay. He never LeBron. Left. He was on his – the one thing I don't like about LeBron is he always went through – he always oh had man, here we go, man. Here we go. That's here okay. Go. go ahead. But anyway, all right. Brian. Yeah. Steph. Yeah. KD. Yeah. I, I was really high on Kawhi Leonard, honestly, but he's just he's not consistent enough for me. Uh, so I can't go with Kawhi. Um, shoot, right now, we're talking right now, and B, out he would be my four. Who would and then Joel and B. Oh, and B, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and then five would probably would uh I I, I gotta go James Harden. What about the freak? You know, putting the Greek freak in it? Nah, it's too too All many right. holes in this game. Right. You know, right. I've seen him. I've seen him get small in too too many big moments. Westbrook? Dame Lillard would, would kind of be. I love Westbrook. Just nah, I couldn't put him in my top five. All right. AB, he, he, great. What's your I'm four and five? My my four and five. Um, so I got we got. We got KD, LeBron, Steph, my four and five. I will put CP3. Yeah. And I will He's put, picking it. Yeah, yeah, CP3. I don't think he gets his love. Um, no, my five, that. my five, I will put. I got them coming out of the West this year. I got the Suns coming out of the West this year. Oh, man, come on. What about my Jazz? Not buying it. <laughs> <laughs> Not buying it. They play some good ball. I might put Russell Russell in five, man. He he's I don't think we appreciate his game either. Yo, he's got more triple doubles than yeah, anyone like, ever I don't, all time. I don't think we appreciate his game enough. I appreciate him. He is a respect. Yeah, yeah, he rebounds and score like he does on. I mean, I I I think I think I'm with I'm with you, AB, on that on that top five. Who would you you with the same five? You got the same five as AB? I'm gonna say okay. So we got the three. Uh, CP, I I wouldn't have thought of him, but he's 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 definitely an honorable mention. Definitely an honorable. Yeah, we, we leaving the Joker out too. Joker's a he's you know. I mean Booker, he's a, he's he's becoming in his own. Yeah. I, I, I I gotta go with I gotta go with uh, I gotta go with uh, Donkic. I mean that guy is Luca. Yeah. No, I can't put Luca in my top five. Yeah. Coming into the year, I thought this would have been the year where he. Yeah. Took that leap because he is obviously play overseas for a while, so it's not like he's really a he's struggling, he's struggling this year. I'm gonna put yeah. I'm gonna put four and five is 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 the freak, and I'm gonna put I'm gonna put I gotta go with Westbrook over CP. Although I think CP CP solidified his Hall of Fame career this year. Man, yeah. I, I I even last year, like when he went to OKC and he. Yeah, I'm like, man. Yeah. Not too many, not too many people could, not too many people could could have done that. Like, no. Do you think the Nets can can make a run? I, I just I think they will just be well, if they're if they're healthy, I think they're they healthy, just, man. I I don't see them getting healthy at the no. end. And I think there's not enough balls to go around for those three guys. Yeah. I mean, they, they are hoopers. So KD doesn't need the ball. You know, he's not ball yeah. dominant. Kyrie, if he can stay take a step back and let Harden be the point. But for me, it's just the continuity and the health. Like, yeah, for sure. And then um, even in the East, with the way Philly playing right now, Joel Embiid, I don't think they'll be able to do nothing with him in the seven-game series. He's ripping it right now. Yeah. Yeah. He's balling. If he stays healthy, that's another yeah. one. But appreciate you, Mike, man. Right, man. This, this is a cool, man. This is a pleasure, man. Really we got to be having me. It's been great. Sure, Mike, gotta I'm going to get, you, you, I'm get your info from, um, from Darius as right. well. I want to stay in touch. Where do you <clears throat> There you have it. Another episode of the Man to Man Pod. Um, great conversation. Um, obviously, we to- told you guys we'll have more than just football here, life, financial literacy, and we'll have more to come. Special thank you to Michael um, taking time out of his business schedule to come on and rap with us. Um, but again, you know, another great episode. Um, I'm Antoine Bethea. 
Got my co-host Darius Butler. Yes, sir. Man, y'all stay tuned. Stay locked in with us. We out. See you soon. Out of here.